Hey everyone, in the last video we built a real-time chat application and we added event broadcasting using Pusher and Laravel Echo and that's all working great. With the release of Laravel 5.4 came a new testing tool. It's called Laravel Dusk and it offers a nice way to do uh, kind of a, a in-browser sort of testing that was not really possible without using uh, Selenium or some sort of web, web driver and usually that is, is pretty tricky uh, and error prone especially if you are trying to test apps with JavaScript components like we are we have a, a view app and technically when you load the page that view app is nothing but like a couple random HTML tags and it, it doesn't contain anything so asking a computer to check that for real stuff is difficult with adding a bunch of timeouts and that's always unpredictable luckily Laravel Dusk uh, gives us a nice tool set to build that with and uh, you can find the docs already in the master section of the uh, Laravel docs this is going to be, I'm sure, just part of the normal docs very soon, but uh, Laravel 5.4 has not yet been released. And this is under browser tests. You'll find information about Dusk. So uh, Dusk is very simple to get up and running with. We want to start by just requiring it with Composer. So I will go in and do that, let that run. And uh, next, we will want to set up our uh, app service provider to be able to use Dusk, but only on the local and testing, because you wouldn't really want to run these tests in production. Uh, so I'm going to go in and drop this into the app service provider file that I have. And I'm going to use Laravel Dusk. And then also under the register method, drop in this stuff. And I won't hit save until uh, Dusk has finished installing with Composer. OK, that is done. And I will hit save. And I'm just going to close out of all my other tabs. Next, it wants us to uh, run PHP Artisan Dusk install. That'll set up some scaffolding for our Dusk tests. So let's do that. That was very quick. Uh, it may have added some new things under tests. So now we have a browser folder with pages. So uh, pages and screenshots, and then a Dusk test case here. Um, pages apparently are kind of a, a helper. You can kind of collect common methods and represent a page as a, a PHP class um, so that you can organize kind of these browser tests a little bit differently. So there's a home page example in here. Uh, and then screenshots is a really cool part of Dusk. Whenever a test fails, it'll take a screenshot of the page at the time, so you don't have to try to guess what happened. You can actually look at the screenshot, and we will take a look at that in a little bit. But first, we'll go back and look at uh, the way these tests work. Let's just try running an example test. PHP Artisan Dusk, you used to run it instead of PHP Unit. Uh, by doing this, it is going to set up and clean up the screenshots folder correctly and maybe a couple other things but uh, the first test is passing what was that first test let's go find that first test the example test was just going to look for slash uh, index and then see Laravel so of course our, our Laravel home screen is still there we haven't removed that yet um, and if I try to say Josh and rerun that test uh, we'll see that it fails and whenever that screen pops up, that means that uh, it's taking a screenshot and something has, bad has happened. So you really don't want to see the, the screenshot if you are hoping for a passing test. And the nice thing is that we now have a screenshot under here seeing the failure. And it doesn't see Josh anywhere here. So it failed, which is, is, is accurate. Uh, but what I really want to test with Laravel Dusk is um, to use browsers and to use multiple browsers so this this section in particular is really neat you can say uh, request more than one browser at a time and log in as two different users and then uh, visit the same page and interact with each other so this is like exactly what we want for our application uh, so I'm just gonna copy all of this and, and modify it to our needs so uh, we're going to uh, have two browsers. The first is going to log in as the first user. Second is going to log in as the second user and send a message to each other. It says, hey, Taylor. Uh, hey, Taylor from Jeffrey Way. Uh, let's just run this and see what happens. I thought I may be missing a bracket.
Okay, so this would make sense because there's no page there. I, I didn't update it at all. I should do that. So for, we're going to want our users to visit chat. And uh, they're going to want to type into an area. It's waiting for a message field but um, or a message text to appear. We don't have any text on our page that says message. So what we can actually do is change wait for to just uh, wait for text to just wait for and then provide a CSS selector. So uh, when we have, let's, let's just go to... Uh, our chat composer view component. Whenever it sees a chat composer uh, class, that means it's ready to go. So I'm just going to wait for a chat composer. Uh, again, here, wait for the chat composer element, not for text. And then type into message um, the uh, text, hey Taylor. Uh, we don't really have a message field, so maybe we will add an ID of message to that chat composer input type text I'm gonna add ID equals message let's do that and so it's gonna type into message hey Taylor and then press send and we do have the button send so that's awesome and then it's gonna wait for Taylor to come in and see Jeffrey way uh, this is gonna fail because we don't have any users named Jeffrey way but let's just give that a shot and see how it goes Okay, our failures are still blank screens. That may be... Uh -huh, okay, I found that it uh, the user class is not um, in imported. That's just kind of a silly error. So I've done that. Uh, use app user, and it should be able to log in correctly. Uh, it still failed the test, and so let's look at the output. Uh, there's one error. There's no such element. I'm unable to locate uh, body text area name equals message. Um, so it's not able to find message. I wonder if we pass a, uh, a a CSS selector instead, if that will work. Um, let's give that a shot. Okay. So now we actually have a failure that represents what we're trying to test. It did not see the expected text Jeffrey way within element body. Um, let's check out the screenshots. Uh, here's a, a, an important thing that I learned right away with um, Dusk is that it's using your development environment's uh, database. And that may not be what you want, especially if you're trying to like test some things out and build things. Uh, so Laravel Dusk provides a way to um, build out different users, or sorry, a different database so you can add all the crazy different users that you want and not affect your local dev environment at all. And so that's as simple as um, changing the uh, .env file to a .env.dusk.local or .staging or however you want uh, your environment to be. But you need a .env.dusk file. So I'm just going to replicate my .env um, and call it .env.dusk.local. And in here I'm going to do a test database and add that to my database folder test db.sqlite uh, finally you are going to want to uh, this database is going to be empty essentially when this test runs but you want to be able to migrate the database so that you have these users available uh, and the messages models and all that stuff so you can use database migrations and, and Laravel will make that uh, possible. So let's run the test. It's probably going to fail because we haven't uh, created any users. Okay, uh, timeout. It didn't ever get to the chat room because we don't have any users. So let's just make a couple users. I'm going to uh, do a factory for uh, user and I'm going to create. Let's make the first person. Uh, give them the name of John Doe and then let's create another user and we'll assign that to like user 1 and let's create another user called Jane Doe and call her user 2 so we're, we're creating two new users and instead of user find one let's just make this a little bit more certain to user 1 uh, is going to go to the chat composer. User 2 is going to go to the chat composer and type, hey, 
John. So you, uh, Jane is going to type, hey, John. And then John, once he sees, hey, John, should see Jane's name because that's in the chat log. So we've created two users. We're chatting with each other. And uh, ideally, this should pass. So I'm going to do PHP Artisan Dusk. Looks like it didn't, it undefined variable user one uh, because this is inside a, a closure. We need to do the silly use user one and user two. Give that a shot. Hey, it passed. That's awesome. And we can change it just to say, hey, Jessica Doe, uh, or wait to see Jessica Doe. Um, and see some screenshots just to ensure that we're not using uh, anything different. It, it looks like a normal chat window. So expected to see, uh, did not ex see the expected text, Jessica Doe. And if we check out our screenshot, there are two assertions. It says, hey, John from Jane Doe and not Jessica Doe. So that is Laravel Dusk. It is really exciting to be able to do this sort of stuff within PHP and not have to fire up a, a wild uh, Selenium test server and all that stuff. Uh, I, I, I haven't implemented this in any projects, but I, I can imagine if you're building a JavaScript web application, a, a single page application, this would be tremendously beneficial to test some um, like end-to-end -end interactivity uh, interaction tests. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that this was interesting to you. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, add them to the comments below. Thanks.